space movie can't resist long opening sequence involving spaceship porn. Heard an Arab voice. What a space racist. Smell the woman. Sweat. Boots. Tool belt. Left. You smelled her tool belt? Why would these people cryo sleep in a janitor's outfit or any regular clothes? Too heavy in the ass! Can't get my fing nose down! My favorite prostitute has the same problem. The ship is diving at a high rate of speed, and yet this asshole can just walk around the ship without being flung all over the place. I'm no spaceologist, but I think a spaceship entering the atmosphere would be traveling at high enough speeds for shattered glass from the window to kill this girl instantly. Again, how is this spaceship crash landing at a leisurely 55 miles per hour? There's some anesthesia in the medlock. In the is that a totally fake sci-fi drug combining anesthesia and morphine? Not anymore, not. Man, these motherfuckers are hardcore in the future. You do realize there's no water, don't you? All deserts have water. Including on alien planets I've never been on before. I guess Lethal Weapon 2 must have been the in-flight movie. Also, Beam suddenly has magic convenient space for Riddick to fit his handcuffs through when it clearly wasn't there earlier. Also, a huge exhaust tube running alongside the beam disappears when Riddick does his contortion act. Okay, so this guy comes running up and says you should see this, but then when they're looking at the third sun, no one appears to have gone anywhere at all. I mean, they give us the establishing shot of the lookout guy with the scope on the roof before this guy even runs up to the group. And he's there at the end as well. So, did this guy say, I think you should see this, and then just silently wait several minutes for the third sun to appear over the horizon? Also, how the f*** far away from the crash site would this guy have to have gone to be able to see a sun on the horizon that couldn't be seen from the crash site? I thought you found his restraints over there, towards sunset. Right, which means he went towards sunrise. Yeah, but if you're Riddick, wouldn't you know that Johns would think this? Or does this just become like the Iocane scene in The Princess Bride? I'm not a great fool, so I can clearly not choose the wine in front of you. But you must have known I was not a great fool. You would have counted on it, so I can clearly not choose the wine in front of me. No darkness. No lights because no darkness. So this geological team that was here before had no use whatsoever for a lamp. They just let in the blinding light every time they need to read a book to go to sleep at night? No! If you're blindly swinging a blade like this with the intent to kill someone, how do you stop your momentum at the last second? God, I thought I was the only one who got out of the crash of life. This innocent guy was clearly not threatening and looked nothing like Riddick, but he gets shot anyway. I thought it was Riddick. What, is he Bugs Bunny or something? Oh, now Riddick wants to get away. What the hell was he doing when he decided to kick back on the lawn chair out in the open a minute ago? You mean the whispers? 29 minutes before the film's main character speaks an audible line of dialogue. Closer. Scene does not contain a lap dance. Yeah. Experienced bounty hunter drops his guard when murderous convict gets his chains shot off. It should be Riddick. His name is Dick Riddick. Movie set in the future tries to pass off a Commodore 64 as a spaceship monitor. This kid has alien bats all over and around his head and yet somehow manages to get on the other side of the door without any of them coming with him. I know it's pretty awesome when the whole planet goes into prolonged total darkness, but isn't that just a little convenient that the planet with three suns and constant daylight is having its once every 22 years eclipse while there are crash survivors on it? And darkness loving killer aliens? And a main character who sees really well in the darkness? That's how this is how ships. This is just a personal grooming appliance. Yeah, well, whatever I can overlook to advance the plot. Now, the only way you people are truly safe is if he believes he's going free. Let's talk about John's plan. He needs to transport Riddick alive because he's worth twice as much alive than he is dead. I am worth twice as much alive. So the idea is to make him think he's going to go free so that he doesn't do anything to hurt the crew. But when Fry suggests that Riddick could help navigate... Maybe we can use him to help us navigate or something. something that would go a long way to make Riddick believe that very thing, Johns thinks Riddick might kill the pilot. Then he says chains don't hold this guy, so what is the actual plan? Johns can't just leave Riddick on the planet or he gets no bounty. And if he's on the ship, Johns thinks Riddick will screw everybody over and hijack the ship. Of course, we never hear the entire plan because... If we bring the cells up at the last possible minute... When the wings are ready, when we know we're because ready. Fry constantly interrupts Johns. Chains don't work on this guy. Chains don't hold this guy because you keep putting him in easily escapable situations. Or you're just shooting the chains off of him yourself. Or the ship crash lands. I mean, you can't account for dumb luck. And just being dumb. Here we see the hatch close and Fry goes to prep the ship. Then Riddick shows up out of nowhere. How again? I mean, he doesn't have anywhere to hide in this thing. Does Riddick have the ability to blend into stuff like the T-1000 and Terminator 2? Ever wonder why John shakes like that? Ask him. Oh, can't you just tell us? Eye poking. Johns just happens to be doing the very thing that Riddick told Carolyn to ask Johns about when she goes to see him. As the eclipse is about to happen, it's a race to the finish, with these Saturn planets moving quite rapidly. But then they must stop their orbit or something and just hang there because the darkness lasts forever after that. At the rate they were rising into place, the eclipse should have lasted about 10 minutes. How many are there? 193,465. 
Oh shit, we need to get down. Thank god there's a sudden trench right at this moment. Also, do nocturnal flying creatures have an aversion to lower elevation that I should be aware of? And if so, how would she know this? Shasa was just torn in half. I think her screaming days are over. Yeah, well, there's only a million of these things flying around. This is the perfect time to get up and not worry about anything. We have to be inside to close the door. Come on, let's go! Also, I guess these creatures can't fly to areas just outside of ships, even if there is a ton of meat there. She should have stayed down. If she only would have stayed down, she'd be okay. I guess we've established that staying down is the defense these creatures can't penetrate. An aversion to lowness is common among flying monsters. These just might be the f that killed every living thing on this planet. I know! The people here before you guys were awfully bad at staying down. I'd rather piss glass. How does one give himself this option? It's like the knife is scolding it. It hurts them. Yeah, but... This! That's death row up there. Especially with the girl bleeding. I'm sorry, did they just make this girl's period a plot issue? And for what? Just so you could have a surprise that the inessential character they think is a boy is actually a girl? Riddick pushes an everyday, somewhat round boulder out of the way of the cave entrance, and then when he pushes it back, it magically transforms into a taller, triangular, exact fit for the opening to seal everyone inside. Hero contemplates leaving the innocent people behind, even though you know he's going to go back for them, cliché. Sweet spot just to the left of the spine. Fourth lumbar down. The abdominal aorta. So where the hell's it got now? It's funny Lieutenant Dan said that, because right then, God showed up.